Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Brian Baptist Church on this Sunday. And to the ladies, I'll say it early, I'll say it later. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, we're glad you're here, and we have a few special things that are going to go on for you in just a little bit. Uh, but before any of that happens, Brother Jim Grew is going to lead us in the song. So this is going to be hard. You're going to have to find page one. So uh, he'll, he'll give you the rest. All right, let's all stand together as we sing My Savior's Love, number one. All right, all together on the first. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus Nazarene. Wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden, he prayed that my will but thine. He had no tears for his own griefs, but sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. In pity angels beheld him and came from the world of life comfort him in the song rose he bore for my soul that night how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me he took my sins and sorrows, he made them his very own. For the burden to Calvary and suffered, died alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's song for me. When with the ransomed in glory on my side last shall see, will be my joy through the ages, sing of his love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful is my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me amen we are going to begin with a word of prayer and then after that uh hang on to your songbooks because Brother Jim Grew is going to lead you in another song here. I'm so glad to have you here on this special day. Again, it's one of those weekends that's unusual. We have a, a few church families, and they took Mother's Day trips. And they went to see their moms. And then some of you, you took trips, and you came here. And so it all worked out. Got a, v, got a Vermont transplant there. You made the longest trip of all. You win the man, uh, the woman, uh, the lady times mile award. So let's have a, a word of prayer right now and ask God's blessing on the service right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, loving us so much that you gave your only begotten Son that we could have the opportunity to receive the gift of eternal life. And we also come in thanksgiving, Lord, because not only are you a loving God, you are a nurturing God, and in that part of your character, uh, you decided the needs that we'd have in our lives and decided as young children 
uh, that we would need them all. And so uh, we're grateful uh, for these many ladies who, who have given uh, to their children in a way that sometimes their children cannot understand. But the sacrifice is great. And we thank you for that. And we come and we honor them today as you call for us to honor our moms. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And you're going to sing another song, Brother Jim. And remain standing, number 16. It is no secret, number 16. All right, all together now. The chimes of time ring out the news, another day is through. Someone slipped and fell, was that someone you? You may have longed for and it strength, your courage to renew. Do not be disheartened, for I bring hope to you. It is no secret what God can do, what He's done for others, He'll do for you. can do. There is no night, for in His light never walk alone. Always feel at home wherever you may roam. There is no power can conquer you while God is on your Side. Just take him at his promise. Don't run away and hide. It is no secret what God can do. seated and now we're into the very very interesting part of our service and that is we're going to have the children coming up here in just a second and uh, Mrs. Watkins is on the move and she will let you know where you stand so come on up because we have a children's choir and uh, we're going to have a wonderful time they've been working hard on this song here is an interesting thing okay come up toward more toward the front yeah, come up toward the front. Come up close. Like Rosalie and Converse, I guess. Front. I don't know. Sam, you come forward. Yeah, guys, come up real close to the front here and over yeah. this way. Pull that chair back right there. We're going to have you clustered over on this side. So, um, yeah, one of the things that moms don't like is when my child was invisible. Okay, they're coming on up. And Haley, we will get you up there as well. Haley's coming in behind you. Okay, very good. And uh, go ahead, and then every, everybody scoot farther. Sam, you come forward. Can you in front of Haley? Okay, this way, Sam, right here. Right there. And Killian, right there. Okay, very good. Okay, Eli, right this way. Okay, and Tanya, okay, I think we can see everybody. And you can see the words. 
Thank you for the word maker. That took a little work. Okay, and here's the interesting thing about the song they're about to sing. The song we just sang was a song by Stuart Hamblin. Those words of the song, actually he witnessed to John Wayne with the words of that song. This song is also from Stuart Hamblin that the children are going to sing right now. Stay there. Don't move. Don't move. You've got to stay there because now you folks are going to help in a big, big way. At this moment, we're going to have everybody who can be called mom by somebody stand up right now. Everybody that can be called mom by somebody. Okay, look, it's important to see these people. By the way, moms are the reason that we are alive. Think about that. If we didn't have a mom, we wouldn't even be alive. And so, so we're going to give, before we do anything, we're going to give applause to all these moms right here. Yeah. And then Mrs. Watkins is working. Every one of you is going to take a flower to one of these moms, and they're going to sit so down. down. But wait, 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 wait. They're also going to take that mom, Killing. You're going to take two things to that mom. You're also going to take this and a flower. Okay. And flower to your mom, okay? That way, and Sam, here, take one with you. To your mom. To your mom, okay. Kenzie, you come down next. Easy. And you go to a mom that's standing. Go to a mom that's standing right. and give that to Ready? her. I wonder, to your mom. choices, choices, which mom to give that to? Okay. 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 And next, hi, Tanya. Tanya? Yeah, Tanya, if you can and help. Can you take this flower to the lady that's standing over right here? Put your hand up to her hand and she's going to take over this way, Tanya. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And you can go to the lady right here with her hand up to her. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you can. 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 Yes, you Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, Rosie, Rosie's come at three, three cycles. Rosie's doing round two. Yes. Okay, one in the, one in the nursery. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, Rosie is ready. Okay. And it, oh, wait a minute. Mrs. Watkins needs one. Except, what, what? Mrs. Watkins needs something extra. Hide your eyes. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, very, very good. I know, I know the, the guys are eyeing the chocolates going, man, I wish it was Father's Day. I'll give you something different. Okay, Brother Jim's going to lead us in another song here. All right, take your hymn book, stay seated, number 502. And can it be? Yes, it can. Amen. 502. On the first now. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the same? singing at this time the ushers do go ahead and grab our bulletins it's only the second sunday of the month and you may not have the bulletin of the month it's purple purple is the bulletin of the month if you don't have one just raise your hand and these ushers will be sure to get one to you uh, right here just looking here and uh, just kind of favoring the adults heather and cody will get you one right there good to have you folks here caitlin good to meet you yesterday and uh wonderful wonderful uh, mother daughter luncheon and uh, just uh, excited about all the ladies that were there I so appreciate 
um, Mrs. Watkins for all the hard work she did to provide that, but also the workers that helped, the ladies uh, that helped, and then the men that helped me in the kitchen. Thank you so much. I certainly uh, could not have done that without you. And that was kind of a maiden voyage for me. I have never been the food coordinator before, so that was new uh, to me. And uh, again, ladies, thank you for not disappointing. Uh, some of you didn't eat as much, and the men in the kitchen are so grateful for that. Uh, because that meant we ate well ourselves. And so anyway, uh, to the ladies, uh, happy uh, Mother's Day yet again. Um, uh, the Sunday morning message is, is geared talking uh, about moms, what the Bible has to say about moms, and we'll get to that in just a few minutes. But let me talk about the day real quick. The song we just sang, by the way, is a favorite of one of the moms in the congregation. And that is the favorite of Mrs. Uh, Saxstetter. And, um, and then we're going to sing one more song in a moment, which happens to be the favorite of, uh, of uh, the mom who is the co-owner of Susie's Cafe in town. And so anyway, she, we're going to hear from her. And so the rest of you ladies, I want you to know this. Um, tonight... We want to sing your favorite songs if you're a mom. But here's what you need to do. We have to plan this a bit ahead of time. I need your favorite song before 3 o'clock this afternoon. I need that. Or if you know your mom's favorite song, your mom's favorite song, uh, ladies, you can send that in as well. But I, like I said, it is a little bit of an organizational process, so we can't do this at the last minute. And so by 3 o'clock this afternoon, I'm going to need that, and we're going to have a wonderful time singing our mom's favorite songs uh, when that takes place. And so just uh, letting you know that, and uh, just uh, looking at the week, I want you to pray for a few things. Item number one, uh, we will have a special business meeting on the Wednesday night service. And uh, this is dealing with missions and specifically a church planting missionary uh, who was here a couple weeks ago. And so we will have a short business meeting Wednesday night uh, regarding that. And then also making mention, I want you to be in prayer for our intern, Andrew Goodman, because he's going to be traveling this week. He will be flying to Spokane on Wednesday and then he will arrive in Pendleton on Thursday this week, and then he'll be with us for 10 weeks. And uh, for the uh, Sigmunds, you will get to see him because he will be riding and helping on the Pilot Rock shuttle route. And so you guys will get to meet him. As a matter of fact, uh, Pilot Rock is going to get to know him really, really well. There's a few things that we're doing there. do want you to continue to pray for Mrs. Sackerson. Uh, she had a successful procedure, but she's down for two or three days, but she wanted to say hello, and uh, she wanted to say hello and uh, thank you for praying for her. So I, I so do uh, appreciate that. Again, one week from this morning, uh, Pastor John Paisley of Riverview Baptist Church will be preaching next Sunday in the Sunday morning service. He is Preacher of the Month, and so he will be with us. And uh, we're looking forward to having him with us. Uh, those of you involved in Bible studies, again, this week we have two Bible studies. We have both a 3.30 Bible study at Subtle Care on Tuesday, and we have a 12.30 Bible study at Mackay Creek on Thursday. So just kind of uh, letting you know the things that are going on. And it's time to begin to plan ahead. The last Sunday of the month, we won't have Brie and brunch after morning service because we're having a meal after evening service, not here. That service is going to be an outdoor service at the Sacrison Ranch, and that'll be the last Sunday evening in May. So just uh, letting you know that, and feel free to review your uh, bulletin regarding other events that are, uh, that are taking place. And again, to our congregation, I'd say this, this is now the time uh, to become generous to the Work Scholarship Fund. And the Work Scholarship Fund is we're raising funds for our intern because he is between his junior and senior year in Bible college, pastoral major, and it's not our goal to starve him so that he can't go back to school. Uh, we want him to go back to school in the fall, and so we're raising funds for him to make sure that that will take place. And so that is plenty, except also to say this, 
Vacation Bible School is coming on June 13th. Of course, we're going to need workers. DVBS is one of those all hands on deck um, activities. And so be sure to approach uh, me or Mrs. Watkins regarding daily vacation Bible school. Okay, did I remember everything? Looking, looking. No, of course I didn't remember anything, but you have a bulletin, you can read the rest. So at this time, we're gonna have uh, the, the men come forward um, on this uh, beautiful Pendleton winter, I mean spring day. Uh, just ask the Sigmunds and Pilot Rock, they had sleet coming down this morning. And so it is, uh, it's a different year, you can tell it is. And the wheat farmers are happy and we're all wondering where we, when we can put our coats away is what we're wondering about that. Let's have a word of prayer, ask God's blessing on the offering this morning. Gonna ask a, a Bob Johnson, Bob, if you would bless the offering, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this Mother's Day when we can celebrate the life that mothers give. And in particular, Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that you've given each of us in this country to, to have more than abundance uh, for our daily needs, Lord, as we now give back a portion of that to you as we bless the offering. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Just a couple quick announcements on both sides of the Lord's Supper here are prayer cards of our most recent missionaries, uh, both uh, Deidre Brown, uh, new prayer cards on this side, Brother Benjamin Cooley, new prayer cards on this side. So just want to let you know that. Also this, and uh, this doesn't happen very often, but um, uh, one of our church families is missing a set of keys. It was lost last Sunday, and I guess it's important to them because they like to actually be able to get into their car. Uh, but it's a little key ring. It had a little tiny jade elephant on it. And so if any of you see that, or maybe you pass by it, uh, they're looking for that. So if you find it, um, please let uh, Mick and Lori know because they're still looking for it. Thank you so much. Brother Jim's going to lead us in another song. Here. All right, let's stand one more time before the message. Number three in your hymn book, Amazing Grace. Number three. Ready? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Church, you are dismissed. 
and the children are downstairs and here come the helpers <laughs> right now yeah right now the they're tearing the wallpaper off the walls and, and uh, anyway uh, yeah they're they're on their way there I love this did you see this after you no after you no after you and uh, glad to have each and every one of you here I'm going to have you turn in your Bibles uh, to the book of first Kings book of first Kings chapter Three, book of First Kings chapter 3. If you don't have a Bible, right there in the middle of the pew, there's a Bible for you. And uh, it's good for you to look. You want to make sure that the pastor's not just telling stories, except the time he actually is telling stories and you know it's a story. But uh, at this point, looking at the account of the Word of God, and what a sharp couple there, uh, Thomas and Amanda, glad to see you. Thank you for dressing in wonderful spring colors because it helps me forget that winter has returned. And so thank you so much uh, for doing that. Again, book of First Kings. And we're going to look at chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 16. And when I go through this passage, you may go, Pastor, really? This is a Mother's Day passage in every way. It's a Mother's Day passage as we go through this. So please look with me in the Word of God, starting in verse 16. Of First Kings chapter 3. There came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman said, O oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house. And I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered that this woman was delivered also. And we were together, there was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night, because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight, and took my son from beside me, while thine handmaid slept, and laid it in her bosom, and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son, Thus they spake before the king. Now I'm just going to stop. I'm going to say one thing. Okay, you've got two ladies. They're living in one house. You know, they they have a, a depleted financial situation because of their situation. And there's nobody else in the house. I'm assuming they moved in together because they're friends. I'm going to safely assume now they're not friends anymore. Okay, let's move on. Then said the king, the one saith, this is my son that liveth, and thy son is dead. And the other saith, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one, and half to to the other. And before you think you're, they're serving a perfectly morbid king, you'll see what happens next. Then spake the woman whose living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. 
But the other said, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. I'm going to talk about the nature of a mother in just a moment. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would use your word in our hearts today. Parents, I agree, Lord, have great and grave responsibilities. You have told them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. You have indicated greatly how precious life is. Why there is a great irony that there are people who are protesting to kill babies on Mother's Day. It makes no sense. But you have placed in mothers a special nature. And I pray that not only would we honor that nature, but that we would search for that nature through your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Now as we look here, we're obviously looking at an account of two unmarried women. The term harlot there does not actually necessarily mean a prostitute, but what it means is these were women that were engaged in infidelity of one sort or another, and so there is no husband in the picture. And so we have two children that were born out of wedlock. And obviously what has happened, as you can read in, su in summary, one of the women, while she was sleeping, she rolled over in her sleep and killed her baby. That is what happened. But at primary issue at hand here is not the character of the ladies, but the nature of one of them. When confronted between either winning an argument and her child dying or losing her child but her child living, she chose the life of her child. It was her nature to protect the child. And this tells you something about the king. The king was not morbid. The king knew the nature of a mother and he knew the truth would come out. And it did. And it's important to understand this nature, the nature to protect the child. This is the nature of motherhood that we are going to examine this morning. And the title of the message is Mom the Protector. And I'm going to show you in the Word of God, how the Scripture describes the protective nature of mothers, and then how the Scripture actually calls on mothers to protect their homes, and then the Scripture identifies a mother's protective activity, but then at the end, a warning, something that a mom cannot protect her children from. And we're going to deal with these four things this morning. First of all, let us look at the statement of Scripture that instantly and easily shows the protective nature of moms. Now, when it comes to this Scripture, we don't have the names of the ladies. I certainly wouldn't want to have the name of the one lady. Uh, the other lady had a good nature. I think I'd kind of like to know who she was. But there's other ladies in Scripture where they're actually named. And so I'm going to go backwards in 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2, and we look at a lady, and her name is Hannah. And there's much that could be said about Hannah. Hannah, who is a woman of faith. Hannah, who is a woman of sacrifice. Hannah, who is a woman who trusted God with her child to the point where she actually gave her child entirely to God. But even in giving her child entirely to God, that did not remove Hannah's protective nature over her child, whose name, by the way, is Samuel. Samuel, who is going to become a prophet and a judge just a few short years hence. First Samuel chapter 2, looking at verse 18, 
it says, But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with a linen ephod. And in summary, after God answered Hannah's prayer and gave her a son, she gave that son to the Lord in the most literal sense possible. She literally brought her son to the tabernacle where Eli the high priest was and said, Eli, here you go. He's yours now. I've given my son to the Lord and walked away. That did not take away her protective nature because look what happens here. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. So now you know God designed the weather specifically for this message today because every mom who has small children is thinking, where are their little coats right now? And this is important to understand. She had this protective nature, and she tried to protect her son from the cold. Year by year, you know, uh, Israel, maybe you don't realize, yes, it has summer, but Israel has winter. It does get warm, and it does get cold. And her protective nature says, I need to take care of my son even though he's away. But Hannah is not the only person that is mentioned. There is another mom, and her name also starts with the letter H, and she is found in Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21, and this is a little bit more of a difficult story because the situation is far more dire as we look at this. Genesis chapter 21, and we're looking at verse 14. And at this point it says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar. So the first one is Hannah. This lady is Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And you know you have the right version if it says that the water was put on her shoulder and the child is not there to be put on her shoulder. The newer translations said she put the child on her shoulder, which is a real problem since at this point, um, Ishmael is about 13 or 14 years old. That'd be the mother of all piggyback rides. And so you know you have the right version if it has the bottle of water and the sun separate here. And so, putting it on her shoulder, that is the bottle of water, and the child, she's taking the child with her, and sent her away, and she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. You see, Hannah tried to protect her son from the cold. Hagar tried to protect her son from the heat. And when she was at the end of everything she could do, she did the last thing she knew to do, and that is she put her son in the shade because it was the end of her ability to be able to protect her son, and she did the last thing she knew to do to protect her son. Now, the good news is, is that God intervened, and they both were saved, and they both were rescued. But the important thing is understanding the protective nature of a mother to protect the child. First from the cold and also to the heat. And in my ministry experience, there is not a more horrible circumstance than a mother who cannot protect a child from harm. I've had hospital visits of injured children and the parents there in the emergency room with me and great concern and lips quivering and uh, 
it's important to understand just the depth of feeling that takes place at that time as the mother is hoping that somebody can help their child. Now, that is a horrible circumstance. However, in the protective nature of mom, I have also had what I call educational circumstances. And an educational circumstance happens when you witness, I don't know a better way to call it, what you call a mama bear in action. And that is an entirely different circumstance. Kalispell, Montana, I watched a, a young Montana girl sidekick a slightly older Montana boy in the stomach and watched him double over. Well, you see, Montana girls are just a little different. But then I watched what happened next. I watched the mother of the boy, Mama Bear, all over the mother of that girl. And yes, Montana moms are just a little different as well. And it's important. But sometimes we have the educational circumstance and it's the protective Mama Bear syndrome and that syndrome erupts. So, this is what scripture states by illustration, the protective nature of moms. But then, the scripture actually calls upon moms to protect their homes. Turn with me to the book of Titus. The book of Titus, you're well into the New Testament now. You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Titus. No, it's actually a little farther than that. But if you get to First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, and then Titus, and we're looking in Titus chapter 3, and in Titus chapter 3, we have a set of instructions on how older people are to act and how younger people are to act and how older men are to act and how older ladies are to act and how uh, mothers of daughters are to act and how mothers are to teach their daughters to act. And this is where we come. So I want to look at this here. Titus chapter 3. We're starting in verse 3 here. Um, 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 except it is Titus chapter 2. So just go back a chapter here. Titus chapter 2, still looking at verse 3. And it says this, The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, and not given to much wine, teachers of good things. And so we now have... Um, we, we now have a kind of a statement of how, how older ladies are not to end up. It says older ladies are not to end up as gossips and older ladies are not to end up as drunks. And it says that older ladies are supposed to be teachers of good things. And the Bible says uh, the hoary head, it means the gray head, is a crown of honor if it be found in the way of righteousness. And so it's talking about what would a righteous older lady teach a younger lady? And here's what the teaching is supposed to be. That she, she, they may teach the young women to be sober. In fact, Mrs. Watkins was teaching the teen girls that word there, that sobriety. And literally what it means is clear-headed. To teach young women to be clear-headed, clear-thinking. And then it says, to love their husbands and to love their children. And then it says this, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. But because we're not changing topics here and we're not getting on a whole lot of rabbit trails, I want us to hone in on some things. First of all, is this, as I said, older women have a responsibility regarding younger women, and that includes daughters. One of the reasons we are having trouble in our society is nobody is teaching anybody anything. That is a major, major problem or they're teaching the wrong things. But then the second thing, I want you to notice this phrase here, the term keepers at home. And some people get completely mixed up on even what this concept is. And they go, yeah, women's place is in the home, and she needs to do the dishes, and she needs to, you know. And I mean, in Bible college, we made up joke songs about it. Send the wife, the blessed gospel wife, let her shine from floor to floor. We, I mean, we made up all sorts of crazy songs like that. 
And, um, but the reality is, is you have to look at the term keeper. Because the term keeper isn't talking about housekeeping like Good Housekeeping Magazine. Literally, the word keeper means to be the guard. Be the guard. It's not referring simply to domestic activity. It's literally the idea of guarding the home because it's the mother's nature to protect. And so it's literally the concept of this place needs to be guarded and the occupants in this place, they need to be guarded, they need to be protected. And let me say something, more so now than in any other time in our society. Because you know what? You go back about 150 years and the only way the devil could get in your house is if he knocked on the door and you opened the front door and let him in. Now he could come in every which way. He can come in through television. He can come in through internet. can come in through smartphones. He just can come in absolutely every direction. The, the four walls of the house is no longer easily a place of protection. But what is a constant is the woman according to scripture, needs to be taught to guard her house. Because that house has precious occupants. That house has precious cargo. That house has children and yes, even young adults that can be put in harm's way. And so I'm going to state the obvious here. No home is guarded when the keeper is not there. That's just stating what is plainly and actually painfully obvious. So, two out of four. Scripture states the protective nature of moms. Scripture calls on moms to protect their homes. But then the scripture illustrates some of the items of a mom's protective activity. Turn with me to Proverbs 31. Now, Proverbs is pretty easy to find because you go right to the Psalms and then you just hang a right onto Proverbs and go to the very end of the book. Very end of the book, Proverbs 31. And of course, part of it is a king uh, talking about the things that his mom taught him. Good mom. But then the king also, uh, mom also taught the king, hey, if you're going to find a good wife, these are going to be the character traits of a good wife. So what you need to look for. And we find certain items of protective activity in here. Look with me at verse 15 of Proverbs 31. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. Okay? Culturally, what do they say is the most important meal of the day? Breakfast. They say breakfast, the most important meal of the day. Okay, well, if breakfast is the most important meal of the day, then somebody has to fix the most important meal of the day. And I'm sorry, back then, the Safeway, I'm sorry, but the, the corner of Jerusalem Safeway store, uh, they didn't have great nuts flakes and they didn't have uh, cinnamon toast crunch. They didn't have any of those things. I mean, now, you know, uh, mom goes, you want breakfast? The cereal's in the cupboard. And that's it. But back then, you know, they had to make breakfast. And so they arose before dawn and they needed the dough and, and they got things ready for that. But that is part of the protective nature of a mom, nourishing the house. You know, a lot of moms know it's probably not a good idea to feed their child chocolate frosted sugar bombs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Not a good idea. And so, you know, children actually need some health food. By the way, children don't want health food. So I'd let you know that. They don't want health food. They say, Mama, these teeth are going to fall out anyway, so can I rot them out first? I mean, that's kind of a child's attitude. But mom knows better. Mom wants the bones to grow strong, wants the child to grow uh, taller than four foot nine and uh, different things like that. And so there's this reality here of nourishing the house and that is part of a mother's protective nature. But then there's also this, Proverbs 31, 21. Uh, Proverbs 31, 21. Sorry, there was no Jerusalem Walmart either. And it says, she is not afraid of the snow for her household. Again, you can't make up this stuff. I didn't know it was going to snow today. 
Um, she is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. And this is kind of relating to Hannah. She clothes her children, you know, and, you know, moms will say out the door, do they have their coat? I, I wish it was that way. Usually it's the other way around. The child comes home from school and the mom says, where is your coat? And the child goes, I don't know. No, nope. could be in the corner of the playground, could be in the uh, second grade classroom, could be in the lunchroom, who even knows? And by the way, this happens at Berean Baptist Church all the time too. We steadily pile up coats over a two-year period of time and, and we try to find out who they go to. But we've, I've discovered something very interesting about children who are third grade on down. They have no idea what their clothes look like. <laughs> they have no idea. I learned this in summer camp. Jared, you may remember this. We had a couple younger guys at summer camp and I'm trying to match socks and I go, are these your socks? Are these your socks? And they're all going, I don't know, I don't know. I went home with like a half a, half a dozen pairs of socks and I finally just handed them to one dad. I said, listen, they're all their size. It's got to belong to them, but they don't know they're theirs. And so we have this reality here. But nevertheless, Clothing her children, that's part of a mom's protective nature. And then there's this in verse 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. And this is another part of a mom's protective nature. It is careful, motherly counsel. Careful, motherly counsel. Moms, have any of you discovered that sometimes you know exactly what you want to say to your child and your child knows exactly that they don't want to hear it? Any of you experience that? When that happens, sometimes a mom's got to be creative. And a mom has got to think, I have got to say this in such a way that they don't immediately get their hackles up and shut me down. And that's why it says in there, it doesn't just say that she has wisdom. It says, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She's got to find sometimes a careful and kind way to say something uh, because for some reason they won't listen to it the hard way. Now, if they won't listen to it the easy way, then you don't really have much of a choice. You've got to tell them the hard way as well. But the important is what you say and how you say it because Every child has a future. And that future can go well or that future can go plainly terrible. And sometimes it all depends, not just on what dad says. And dads, you're important too. Your time's coming. I got about 30 days for you. <laughs> but um, it's important what a mom says and how she says it and how she declares it. And there are so, a lot of praying that needs to take place and there's some talking that needs to take place because scripture illustrates a mom's protective activity. But then we get to this one hard thing. There's something where no mother can protect a child and that is no mother can protect a child from eternity. No mom can do it. And a child has a life. And a life has a beginning and a middle and an end. And after the end is eternity. And there's nothing a mother can do to protect a child from eternity regard, apart from the right counsel and the right advice and the right words. But this is where every child and even every mom has to make their own decision. Because there's five things I think that are very important here. And that is this. At death, judgment is certain for the individual. The Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed for a man to die once and after this the judgment. And that is that at the end of every single person's life, there is an evaluation of their life. And way too many people somehow have this idea that they can become some kind of negotiator with God and they can talk their way into heaven after they die. And that's not it. 
Time's up. It's over. It's over for the mother. It's over for the child. It's over for everybody at the end of life. And so there are decisions that must be made before the end of life that affect absolute eternity. And at death, judgment is certain for the individual. And you know, at this point, moms, you can't help. But there is somebody who can. And the Bible actually names an advocate. An advocate that, interestingly enough, if they're called on and trusted on, has a protective nature for every child of planet Earth who would call upon him. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that person is the person of Jesus Christ. He is the one protector who can help at the judgment. And by the way, how long can he help? He can help forever. He really can. The Bible says this in Hebrews chapter 7, looking at verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Okay? Well, so when is Jesus an advocate? 24-7. 365. 366 on leap year. Every minute, every second, Jesus is an advocate for every child who has decided to become his adopted child. Not just children, moms also, dads also. But he must be chosen. The Bible says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. It literally means the adopted child of God. Even to them that believe on his name. There's not a single person in this room that can be forced to make a decision regarding their eternity. Not one person can be forced. Everybody must make the choice on their own. This is where we say God has no grandchildren. No, it's not enough for a child to be raised in a Christian home. A child raised in a Christian home won't make them Christian any more than being raised in a garage will make them a car. Doesn't happen. Or I always, always say, having a navel makes them an orange. Doesn't work either. The reality is, is everybody must make a choice. I made a choice when I was a child regarding eternity. And every adult and every child sometime in their life must make a choice because after death, there is no choice. So the choice must be made first. And so for you, whether you be the mom, whether you be the dad, or whether it be your children, the choice could not be more critical. The Bible says in 1 John 5, verse 12, how simple is this? He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. It is that simple. And so my question, no matter where you find yourself, whether you are the mom today with that protective nature concerned for your children, whether you be the dad, whether you be the child. By the way, we're all somebody's child. The question is this. Have you made the choice because you are the only one who can make it? Let's have a word of prayer. With heads bowed and eyes closed, we're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to stand an in invitation.
The Bible calls me the, or I should say my ordination papers call me a minister of the gospel. And what that means literally is I serve the gospel. The gospel does not serve me. I serve it. I serve the message. And the most important message is this. Do you know if you died today, if you go to heaven? Are you sure? Are you 100% sure? You don't want to be 90% sure on something that important. But God, a loving God in his word, a God who loves his creation, desires to protect his creation, if his creation will let him, in his word, he's given absolute guarantees that you can know 100% for sure if you died, you go to heaven. And it's not by anything you do. It's not by church attendance, the offering plate, baptism, membership, good works, none of that. No, this is why Jesus died on the cross for your sins and my sins. If we could get to heaven any other way, Jesus would never have had to come. But he did, and he paid the price, and he offers the gift of eternal life. But that decision must be made in the here and now, not the hereafter. If you're interested in that, I'll be standing right here in the middle. You can just walk straight down an aisle, take me by the hand, say, Pastor, I need to know about this. I'd be more than happy to show you in the Word of God, have one of our other good people show you in the Word of God, how you can have this settled for all eternity and be protected and have a message that you know will protect your children as well. Dear Heavenly Father, please use your word in our hearts and help us at this all-important time. In Jesus' name, amen. And we're going to stand and we're going to sing song 167. The song 167 is just as I am without one plea. Sometimes people think they need to reform themselves in order to come to God. No, God's the one who does the reforming. Uh, we're literally the as-is sticker on the car window. We all come to God as is. And God loves us and he'll take us where we are. And he can help us and give us a place in heaven. As we sing this song, if you have a need, you come while we sing this song. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to people praying perhaps there's something different on the need list for you and and you just feel the need to come and pour out your heart before the Lord the altar is open for that you can have a word of prayer or perhaps you'd want somebody to pray with you and I'm here for that as well and there's been many many times I've had somebody come and we've just prayed right here on the spot what is the need of your heart and if there's something that you need prayer for right now this is your opportunity you need to come? Do you need prayer? Can you come? <clears throat> Just as I am Oh. 